destroyed. Okay, where shall I put you? Hello, today I am reviewing the white wood, wild wood black. Um, of course, as you may have guessed, I got this from Mayleaf. And oh, there's a dent. Oh, it's quite a big dent. Um, yeah, so I got this black tea um, for the sole purpose of the niching clay. And um, I am going to review this. Actually, in fact, I already brewed it once. And um, I was quite impressed, but I think I didn't put enough leaves in. So I will just put a bit more. Uh, something like that. Yeah, let's make a mess. Uh, da, 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 da. And I also got the tray out. Woohoo! Haven't had this tray out for a year or so. Uh, because I was always busy being at work and having fun with pandemic. Blah blah blah. You know, you live through it. Well, we are not through it just yet. Yeah, that should be enough now. Um, so yeah, I took a couple of uh, close-ups of the leaves. I will... Um, oh, actually, yes, that makes... Uh, never mind. Uh, yeah. I just realized I forgot something, but never mind. It's all good. Um, so yeah, I took a couple of close-ups of the leaves. Um, they are really nice and uh, black with some brown in them and um, just take some out oh, this is not this is not going to be enough to smell is it silly me right you know what let's put some in there give it a sniff Ooh, make a mess yay you can't really make tea without making a mess. Brilliant. Right, yeah, roughly that's it. So, pretty much. What was very um, strange with this was that the smell reminds you um, of sweetness of honey. And, uh, and it has this kind of warmth to it and it's uh, you can smell a little bit of wood and uh, dare I say some deep dark uh, forest fruits let's just take more so I need more I need more more of this goodness So yeah, you have lots of uh, sweet, well, it reminds me of honey. Honey, wood, and some deep dark forest fruits. Very fascinating. So, let's put this back there. There, there. Right. So, because um, I just added extra leaves, obviously I will have to make a rinse. And I got the tea pets out as well. Way two dragons and the water buffalo with the funny looking guy. Uh, yeah, I did a video about this. It ha it has really fun looking guy. But anyway, and the uh, double gloss, uh, double walled gloss cup. So you can see the color of the liquor. And. Um, yeah, I have everything here. Let's put the kettle on. Right, water is done. Let's rinse it again since I put extra leaves in. Right, uh, put this there. Lid. Rinse.
and it's sniffing time. And believe it or not, to steam, ah, steam. It um, reminds me there's a sweetness, honey-like sweetness. So it's not like like um, the, the sugar, the, the normal sugar that you can uh, buy because it just gives you that little edginess. But the honey is just somewhat smoother. So it's that kind of sweetness. It's it's not harsh sweetness, right? And a little bit of a. A little bit of a freshness, zestiness, a bit like a, um, a bit like the grape skin, but not not that much. Maybe more like on the lemon side, but it's it's not harsh at all. It's definitely not harsh. It's always hard to smell it um, while I'm recording because there is a time pressure, obviously, because you don't want to make it so long all of these videos you don't I really don't like making like 40 minutes videos I'm sure it's just five ten minutes would be enough but hey right okay let's pull this away okay it wasn't really hot Yeah, the tray is there. Okay, excellent. I don't want to make a mess. The carpet is a bit beige and white, so I just really don't want to make a mess. Can you imagine? Everything would just go everywhere on this carpet. I think boy dance would kill me. Um, right. But these teapots didn't really change colors because the thing wasn't hot, was it? So let's make our first brew, then like 25 seconds ish, put this there, there, and to you as well. And I did make a bit of mess, but hey, and I forgot to calculate the seconds. This is why you need tea towel, and this is why it's called tea towel. Because you're wiping tea up. Now I hope that this tray is deep enough. Yeah, it should be okay. Righty ho. I guess time is up now. So let's pull this out. Look at that. It is hot. Very hot. So this is something that you have to keep in mind. You have to learn where to touch the clay pot. Because if you touch it a bit too close, you will burn your fingers. And especially if you leave the tea to brew for a very long time in the Jesus Christ. Ah! It was hot. Take this out, put it there. Wow. So there's the liquor. There you go. It's very dark, uh, copper like color. I quite like it actually. Right, little May leaf cafe. And also because the the pot is hot as well, you can smell the clay itself as well. But the tea itself is just that um, sweet lemony whatsoever mixture to me actually. <coughs> so let's do this. Right, 
So when I uh, first opened uh, the tea and uh, smelled the dry leaves as they were, uh, my first thought, it just came into my mind. So that was the first thing is, um, why did I bother to buy any tea from Amazon, right? I'm, I'm thinking about the black teas. Why did I bother to, um, to buy anything from Amazon at all tea-wise? It's just... It's just completely different, right? When I tasted the tea, the very first thing that came into my mind was um, it reminds me Grandma's Earl Grey, but not in a nasty way. And this is a big pot, and I'm holding my index finger up as well. This is a big pot because the usual Grandma's Earl Grey. If you think about it, it's bitter as hell. This one is not. But what I mean by is uh, when you have an Earl Grey and you put a bit of sugar in it, you put a drop of lemon in it, um, it reminds me of that. But once again, and it's a big, big pot, it's not bitter. And as I said with the sugar, because although normal sugar and, and honey are sugar pretty much, but in a different way. Obviously, honey is way much more complex than just sugar. So, with sugar you have that, that edginess, that really punchy sweetness, and it's from there to there, and that's it. But with honey you have all of this, this, this range of, of, or shall I say, depth of sweetness. So it's that kind of uh, sweetness, and with, um, when, you put a, when you put a drop of lemon, into the tea, into the Earl Grey, and if you mess it up, it will just make it bitter, it will be like, Ugh. you know what I mean? But this one is not. So that is that little zesty freshness mixed with this sweetness, and you get the other notes, you know, that, that basic black tea notes, uh, like the wood, and of course the clay affects it as well. So. Let's keep drinking this, because this is nice, actually. I wouldn't say that this tea is, is thick. I wouldn't say that, definitely not a thick tea. Um, I wouldn't even say it's a medium one. Um, and you can um, ask how do you know it's if it's thick or or how thick or whatever. But once you taste a thick tea, you can you can taste that like it, it's really thick. So it's it's when you stir it around, it it's 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 really that that liquory thing. It's it's dense, pretty much. And also if you just put some in the cup. And if you just toss it around within the cup, like this, right, you stir it around and you can see if it's moving easily, if you need little energy to move it around, and you can see the bubbles, if, if they are just there, how they behave. If it's easily moved around, that it's it's not really thick. But when it's thick, like oil, then then you know it's it's thick, right? And um, yeah, pretty much it reminds me of uh, my grandma's Earl Grey. I know it doesn't sell it well, um, but as I said, it's it's um, it's in a um, different level though. So it's not that um, made out of of the tea bag and boiled the hell out of it and put a drop of lemon in it and sugar just to make it nicer. Um, no, this is obviously loose leaf, right? To start with, not tea bag powdery, whatever. And obviously it's not boiled the hell out of it. The, um, and as I said, The 
sweetness is not harsh, the sweetness is smooth there and uh, and that little zesty lemon like zesty freshness is 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 there but it's it's really not in your face okay so it's really not in your face it is a really smooth nice tea I quite like it actually so this might be a keeper but we shall see because I have another black tea that I have to try with this niching pot first and um, yeah and I still have quite a lot of tea to drink um, so before I do my restocking I pretty much I want to use them all up and then I will decide which one I should um, buy really but I don't think it will happen before 2022 that I'm restocking on tea because I have plenty let's give it another brew right? Oops, I'm gonna drop the thing. And a bit went on my finger. Lovely. Let's try to keep track of time. Let's get rid of that. And I will make a video about how to remove these tea stains. And from there as well, because uh, if you just want to do it in a normal, usual washing up with soap and whatsoever way, hey, it's not going to happen that easily. And it will be really hard to reach these uh, bits, so I will make a video about it. How to clean your tea wear. Obviously you don't wash up the clay, because the clay is... Or um, it has these pores. Pores? Yeah. So pretty much you have tiny holes. Um, just like on your skin. The pores. And um, if you wash it up with washing up liquid, it just absorbs the washing up liquid. And yeah, you won't get rid of it. So, no. You just rinse the teapot. Right? Make sure you get out all of the tea and whatsoever. But you are not going to wash the teapot with washing up liquid, the clay teapot because it's just not gonna be nice you will ruin your clay pot, you pay like uh, this one is like 100 quid, this finishing clay pot 100 quid without v VAT do you really want to ruin it with washing up liquid? no so um yeah let's see let's call it second and half brew because obviously I put extra leaves in. Let's see how it's changing. Okay. A bit of this zestiness is coming out a bit more. But it's definitely not bitter. So don't get me wrong. It is not a bitter tea. It is a nice, pleasant tea. I think it is quite, what is really nice about this, it is it is well balanced, so you have all of this um, notes that I was mentioning earlier, um, <coughs> and it is in balance, it's not too sweet, not too bitter, not too woody, not too earthy, it's just about right, if you know what I mean. And pretty much when you brew them they look yeah, just like any normal loose leaf tea after a couple of brews. Um browner leaves, but they are not breaking up, right? So even this one, as you can see, still hasn't opened fully, okay? It's still curled up, so it it will still give me more and more. So yeah, you can do like um a couple of brews, eight. Eight, seven, eight brews, depending on the temperature of your water, depending on how long you are brewing it for, etc, etc, etc. Obviously, if you overbrew it and you um, leave it in for like a minute, probably it will, it will be bitter, okay? So don't do that. Um, but just follow the guidelines, which is like, what, 25 seconds, 20-25 seconds for the first brew, 
and just keep adding five seconds on top. Okay. Um, after every brew, so second brew, 30 seconds, 35, 40, you, you get it, okay? Um, yeah. But let's carry on with this. And as I said, I don't really like to make long videos, but it looks like today's is going to be another long video. Since I got the tray out and the teapot after a year, Trying to figure out the finish. It leaves a little bit of a dryness in your mouth, but it's it's so small amount that you can barely notice it. Maybe a little bit of a yeah, just a little bit of a dryness. What is there in the finish? But as I said, this is it is really small. What I can also notice because what is tea drinking is about is um, not just the flavor and and whatnot. It's about how it makes you feel. So um, you know you you can buy all of these fancy teas, uh, especially the Puka ones in Sainsbury's or any other shops. Uh, yeah, sorry, um, for whatever reason it stopped recording. Um, so you can buy all of these Puka teas and you have for uh, sleep, sleep tea and uh, any other variants um, and they use uh, lots of herbs, right? So sometimes I use the, the sleep tea, um, it's really good actually. To be honest with you, I, I have to admit, it is really good. Although it comes in a tea bag and whatnot, it is still good and effective. Um, the sleeping one that is, because that was the only one that I have tried. Um, no, actually that's not right, because I, I tried the turmeric one, I tried um, I tried quite a few. And they were, yeah, they were really good and obviously how the box is set up as well, you can take it apart. There's a little story inside the box. Uh, blah blah blah. So anyway, what my point is, is um, how the tea makes you feel. That's that's what counts. So for example, the book cob says this tea will make you feel this way. The sleepy tea will make you sleep better, which actually does. Um, so it's not just about the flavor. It's not just about oh, is it nice and texture. It's not just about the the story because tea can have a really good story that it has been handpicked by virgin ladies god knows where on the mountain that has never ever you know nobody has ever been there or or it was sourced from the i don't know some sort of hidden places whatever right so it's not just that because it can have a really good story like that but if it um, makes you feel ugh, then it's not good, is it? So, let's talk about how it makes you feel, right? Um, funny enough, um, what I can feel is, is a little bit of... Um, obviously, it warms you up if you're drinking hot drink, right? So, apart from making you feel hot, um, it just um, makes you a little bit more active like normal tea would, but not as active, obviously, as a green tea. You know, green tea, high of caffeine, whatsoever. Um, but this also makes you feel a little bit awakened, if you like. Um, so probably don't drink it before you want to go to bed. Don't drink it at midnight. And, uh, yeah, it makes me feel okay, actually bit more awake and obviously because um, I associated it with the uh, grandma's Earl Grey was pretty much because it, it reminds me the tea what I was used to drink um, 
at my grandma's place when I was little. Um, probably this is why it just popped into my mind, grandma's Earl Grey. And then I realized it, it doesn't really sell it well, so I had to explain what do I mean, right? But what's the really good point about this being associated with grandma's Earl Grey? I, uh, I had friends, uh, obviously, so it's not just about tea. No, I do have friends, so uh, but they are not really keen on tea, right? I wasn't keen on tea a couple of years ago. I was like, tea? It's just, come on, right? But then I started to go into the tea world and now I have tea pets, I have clay, I have... So anyway, um, so um, the friends of yours who are not really into tea, you give them something really special like a, a heirlooms um, silver needle, they won't pick up those tiny little notes in the tea or, the, or even with the gushu, they, just, they won't pick up, they will just taste it and Oh, this is bitter. Oh, this is that. This is that. You know what I mean? Unless the the, the taste is really punchy in the face, like a jacuro. So you you can't miss the taste of that. But obviously they need guidance as well. What to taste? However, what my point is with this one, because it rem it it just reminds you like an Earl Grey with a bit of lemon, bit of sugar. Um, they don't really have to think about the, the taste, they don't really have to um, assess it and, and, and they don't really have to be nice about it for you, okay? If you know what I mean, because some people say, I can't taste anything, or with, with the silver needle, I had a friend who said, it tastes like nothing. Like, okay, that's, that's your tongue, that's your opinion. If it tastes like nothing, but with this, because most people are familiar with Earl Grey and all sorts, they can taste and they can like, oh yes, I know, I know this kind of taste. That reminds me of this and that, and that's the point. To connect people, really. You sit down with your friends, you have a drink. Most of the times, people have alcoholic drink, but for example, with a cup of tea. Put the kettle on, you know the saying, put the kettle on. And, and with this tea, because these friends of yours who are not really into the tea, they taste it and they can appreciate it that, oh yeah, this, this is actually something that I have tasted before. It is something that I kind of know about. So, um, yeah, it won't be so alien to them, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, obviously, if you have all of your friends and they are all into tea, that's a different story. But, as I said, most of the people are not into tea as much, so if you give them tea like this, they can enjoy it, because the flavor is, is similar to what they are used to. And, um, yeah, just don't tell them the price, because then they will say, Oh, I can get it cheaper in Sainsbury's or in the Polish shop in a tea bag. Mm. Okay? So just don't tell them the price. Just tell them it's reasonable. So, yeah, I think um, that's that. I will brew it a couple more times. And I will do a quick um, recording at the end to say, you know, just how I felt like, how the tea has changed over the bruise. Okay, back in a sec. Right, so uh, I have brewed this tea for uh, five times now. And uh, I watched the movie on Netflix. Um, it was called Gone Baby Gone. Uh, it was about um, uh, abduction, well, kidnapping a four-year-old girl, and um, yeah, I'm not going to tell you the whole story, obviously. Check it out, it's on Netflix. Um, so yeah, I watched it, um, and I obviously I brewed it a couple more times, uh, so it has been totally brewed, uh, brewed five times now. Um, 
and now I'm going to brew it again see how it has changed the taste um, and I'm pretty hungry now as well so after that I will eat so let's make this quick uh, this one is already heated up let me prove it to you you see little water buffalo turns yellow so the water is hot and let's brew this uh, let's close this and put some water on it to heat the pot up. There, there. Give it to a little dragon and to this one as well. Right. So, and I hope that I didn't overfill the tray. It's not leaking, so that's a good thing. Righty ho. I'll uh, pour some hot water into this as well to warm this up again. Not much, that will be fine. And warm up the cup as well. And give it to the water buffalo because it's nice and cold and blue. Yeah, it's getting there now. Right. Uh, I forgot to count the seconds. What could it be? 40 seconds now. So it's six, six times. So we'll get six times five, uh, 30, 55. So let's leave it to brew another couple of seconds. Don't know my seconds. I completely forgot to count, but hi. Um, Yeah, sure. I think it's it's about time. So let's do this. Pull away. You know what? I can still um, smell the lemon. Lemon is zesty and sweet notes on this tea. But don't get me wrong, it's it's not like lemony, lemon, lemon, lemon. No, no, no. It's just as I said earlier, it just reminds you, you have the tea, you put some lemon and a bit of honey in it. That's, that's how it... Yeah, it's very interesting. Let's see. Let's take this out of the way so you can see the color. Yeah, color-wise it's very consistent. Uh, it's that copper red, brownish, uh, it's red. Hopefully you can see it. Right, so it definitely um, lost uh, most of its um, earthy, woody taste. It's gone more to that, that fruity, lemony, sweet taste. Yeah. Well, that's how it tastes uh, to me like. So it's definitely not earthy um, because I have a couple of these that are some just so earthy. It's just um, eating potato skin. You can imagine it's, it's that kind of earthy, but this one is not at all. So after six uh, brews, it still stayed balanced. Um, 
yeah, I don't think there is any much uh, more to say about this tea. Other than it's a well-balanced tea, it's very pleasant, it's not bitter. Um, I mean, you can count the seconds because you have seen when I poured the water in and when I poured the tea out, so you can check the exact time how long I have brewed it. So it's definitely not bitter at all. Um, and I think the, the pot uh, complements this tea very well as well. It doesn't take it to any extreme um, way. I think the tea stayed in a well-balanced uh, state and I quite like that. So um, the tea doesn't have to taste like anything out of this world. But if it's well balanced, it, it's right in that sweet spot and it makes you feel happy. I think that's that's worth the money. Yeah. I think that's about it. Um, I'm quite impressed with this uh, wide wood black tea. Um, it might be a keeper. It's definitely something that I will consider once I um, once I build up my stock again of these. So yeah, thank you very much if you stay this long with me, and um, hopefully you will have the chance to buy this tea and try it yourself. Maybe you will taste it completely different to me, but uh, I'm only sharing my experience here. All right, thank you. Bye.